Welcome to another video by Ferros Technology. I'm really excited to show you a wonderful feature that you can use in every single one of your databases to drill into your data when you want to have a user select data from a particular form. So let's get at it. We're gonna synchronize two different combo boxes. And in synchronizing the two, the information in the first box will be used as the criteria for the second box so that the list that the user can select from is called down to just what is needed for that second combo box. So let's look at how, how it's constructed. Because really what's happening here is when I click down here, I can choose from various categories. The categories are in a table called categories, okay? So let's look at soups, for example. Now, Northwind Traders is the database that is behind the back scene on this. Um, now, as I click down on this, you can see that soup is only the first one of all the categories, um, but you can see that there are actually three different soups in the soup category, and I can choose from any one of those. Now, this particular set uses VBA, and I'm gonna show you that. This one uses a macro and a query behind the macro, and it performs the same way. If I chose soups here, and I could then choose any one of a number of those soups, okay? So the two combo boxes here and the two here are tied together, and let me show you how that's done. Under the database tools, we're gonna look at the relationships. Now the relationships are really important because the relationships built here on the relationships table allow you to have those two tables permanently linked all the way through your database. Now notice that both of them are just inner joins. Not, neither one of them is an outer join, even though this is a primary key to a foreign key down here in this table, they chose not to enforce referential integrity between the two tables but this is adequate for our needs. So I'm gonna close that. And the effect of doing that is if we look at the categories table, is that when I click the plus here, I can see everything in the products table under the category of beverages. That's the setup for making these two combo boxes work together. So I'm going to, to close the categories table and I want to show the VBA to you first. And as I open it up, I see that the form is synchronized combo boxes. And this is a sub private subroutine in as an after update event on that first combo box. So after update, so after we change the value in that first combo box, it's going to then run this query and it's going to then set the row source equal to the, to the result of that query and then make them equal, okay? Very simple, very straightforward. It's actually just running a query here and making sure that that query value is set as the row source to the second combo box. And now we can look and compare that to the macro that is run here. And here's the embedded macro. And here you see that it, it requeries the control name, the combo products too. That control is the second combo box. So it's going to then set the value of that second combo box equal to this expression or query, okay? So this combo box is gonna be set to the results of that query. Now, what we've got is non-zero, the non-zero function meaning that if it's a text, it will give a, a null, uh, an empty value. In other words, these double quotes over here are the empty value that it's going to feed into the result there if it doesn't find a value. The D min means it's gonna find the minimum value to present to the user as the va first value in that combo box. So it's setting the result of the query, which is all three records, and then setting the value of the combo box to the actual minimum value there. And of course, query category products is the query that we're running, which was the query that also in the VBA code that we had. 
And so we can uh, take this out of design view, put it back in form view. And when I click out here, you can see qu query category products is just this same query. And if I look at SQL view, you'll see that basically it's the same query that was run earlier in the code that we ran, the VBA code that we ran. Okay, now let's look at that second combo box. The second combo box here, the data is query category products. We're going to accept the first column. And um, when we format it, that column is going to be three inches long. Okay, so basically what we're saying here is we're going to look at this query. We're only going to take the first row and that first row is going to be three inches wide. The other combo box at first here is if we look here, it's the table categories. Okay, we're only going to have the first column bound. And when we format it, you'll notice here that the first column is bound, but the second column is the one that it shows. So zero and then two inches. Now the way to do that, okay, you make sure you show two columns, then the first column doesn't show and the second column shows because the second column is the text. The data is the first column, which is the ID number, and the ID number matches with the foreign key that is in the second combo box. So that way they stay synchronized. I tend, I tend to use the embedded macro, this version over here versus the BBA. I tend to want to do things visually rather than um, by writing code all the time. It, it just faster for me. So I tend to use this version of it instead of the VBA version. But whichever you choose, they're equally as effective as you've seen here. And we can put this back in form view. So the result is the same whether you use VBA or use embedded macros. The neat thing about it is the fact that you can synchronize different combo boxes. Just like you can synchronize a combo box to look up data in another table or synchronize a combo box in a variety of, of different ways. So I, I hope you've um, enjoyed this video. If you have, hit the like button for me and hope to see you again in the next, on the next video.